Welcome to Storebrand Cartoons on the Storebrand Comics channel where we talk about cartoons. I'm Tio and this is my mom. Hi, hi and, mom. And your mom too. Um, today, I'm talking about a weird one. This might be a shorter video because there's just kind of less to talk about. Um, but we're talking about the Chronicles of Riddick, Dark Fury. Um, so this might be the first actually obscure one that we talk about because um you probably have to either like riddick or like cartoons to even know that this movie existed or be a vin diesel fan or be a vin diesel fan um but even then you'd have to be kind of a hardcore vin diesel fan to not hardcore i guess i don't know um but yeah this one's a little, a little obscure it's directed by uh, or at least the animation is directed by peter chung mm -hmm who um, cartoon fans would probably know as the creator of the original Aeon Flux cartoon for MTV, which was later turned into a movie. I've seen the movie. I haven't seen the cartoon. Um, like, if you thought that any of the character designs in this movie were weirdly proportioned or grotesque, um, Aeon Flux is even more so. Oh. Um, <laughs> and they were. Yeah. Uh... He also played a big role in getting the um, the Animatrix made, which is the uh, a collection of short films set in the Matrix universe, which that's probably going to be one we also cover at some point okay. here on the channel. Okay. Uh, the Matrix is something I know a little bit more about than Riddick because I've seen at least the first movie okay. and the end of the third one. <laughs> um, and my mom saw all three of them. Mm -hmm. And you've apparently seen all three Riddick movies, mm -hmm. which I didn't even know about. Yeah, I'm a closet geek. Yeah. Well, not really all that closet. <laughs> True. You're more like a wardrobe geek. <laughs> you just, you're just out there in the open. Oh, in the cupboard. With, with a fancy casing. I'm in the cupboard. Um, but yeah, so uh, this movie is only a half hour long. Um, which... It feels longer. It feels longer. You, you do feel that half hour. Mm-hmm. Mostly because it's weirdly slowly paced for mm -hmm. a 30 minute short film. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they don't feel any urgency. Yeah, I thought it was. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah, go, going into it, I did think it would be like 30 minutes of, okay, they're going to get in there, they're going to be violent, and they're going to get out, sort yeah. of thing. But it was more mm -hmm. like a, a, about 20 minutes of build up to. And then 10 minutes of execution. But you know, that that's kind of like a, a Riddick movie, though, too. Is like, they're very much about telling the story. It's not... It's equal story to violence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this one had a very, uh, very interesting story to it, where, like, Riddick and his... And I guess the two other survivors from the first movie, probably... I think so. Because um, I haven't actually seen any of the Riddick movies myself. I was interested in this uh, just point mainly for talking about cartoons. And then I found out my mom has seen the movies. So we have someone here who can know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, which is good. Uh, but yeah, and then um, they, they get captured by, I guess you might call it a bounty hunting vessel or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, what they do is they capture, like, the most wanted people in the galaxy, and instead of collecting a bounty on them, they just kind of put them in this, like, unique state of, like, cryostasis, where they're still awake, but, like, time is moving super slow for them, and they can't physically, like, move all that much. It's mentioned that, like, blinking their eyes is a day's work. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that's a pretty horrific state to be in. Yeah. It's like a... Well, and... When they were walking through, it looked like they were just little statues standing on the side, and then you saw the eyes move on one of them. It's like, yeah. they're yeah, in and, there. And then, like, the lady who's keeping these people as statues, like, touches one of them, and you can tell it's still, like, fleshy and malleable. So, uh... The horrible, yeah. horrible way to end it's up. Like a, it's like, for anyone who has either read or watched Bleach... There's uh, one villain in that show who died, I think, a little more horribly than he deserved because he uh, was, like, dosed with something that made him feel every second like its own small eternity. And then the guy who killed him very slowly worked his sword into his chest so that to make sure that he felt that for basically decades within only a few seconds. So That sounds awful. Yeah. 
Ble yeah, Bleach is pretty intense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so like it made me think of that when they explained how it all works in this movie. Um, and then Riddick kills a couple of weird strobe light aliens in the dark um, because seeing in the dark is his thing. Yeah. And then uh, and then they kill the bad guys mm -hmm. and escape. Yeah, I mean, it was it had typical ending. It had I yeah. mean, as far as like the story is concerned, it's very um, predictable. But um, I think you don't watch this for story. Yeah. You don't watch this for depth of any kind. You watch this for the animation. Mm. It definitely looks like a moving comic book. Yes, it, it looks a lot like a comic book, um, especially one with a unique style. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's um. very, very unique. Um, like Vin Diesel looks like Vin Diesel, yet it doesn't look like Vin Diesel. But yeah, but he's exaggerated. Very yes, very much so. And uh, there, <laughs> it does have a couple of cheesy one-liners in it too. Like uh, oh my god! Like there's this one, my favorite one. It's like think. Vin Diesel one-liner land. Yeah, my favorite one in the whole thing was when the uh, lady who runs the ship they're on is uh, describing the whole statue thing, and she's like, "They are works of art," and uh, Riddick is just like, "Lady, your taste sucks." And and <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, I I like. There's a lot of those. Was, I like cheesy one-liners. Very though. very much. Very much, um, I mean, I love Sly Stallone. Mm -hmm. I, I love Sylvester Stallone. But it sounded like Sylvester Stallone yeah. in one of the Rambo movies through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I know that Vin Diesel, like, his, his characters don't, like, I don't know why he sounds like he's mentally challenged when he talks, but he does. <sighs> what? It's just because his voice is low and gravelly and, he's, and he doesn't talk very loud. Yeah, so... But, uh, I mean, I'm not a huge Vin Diesel fan, so I'm probably not the person to make that kind of an assessment. I, I've never been a huge Vin Diesel fan myself, but uh, I have been becoming curious about the Fast and the Furious movies lately. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm fast curious. Um, I'm, I'm fast and curious. <laughs> that's it. Uh, oh my god. There we go. Uh. Um, so... Because I, I once heard the Fast and the Furious movies described like a typical long-running anime, where the first couple storylines are slow, boring, and not that good. But you just got to get past the first hundred episodes or so, and then it gets awesome. So like, like the Fast and Furious is like you just got to get past the first couple not great movies, and then when it starts getting stupid is when it's awesome. Okay, I watch um, movies and TVs the same way I read books. You better grab my attention within the first five pages otherwise we're gone see ya i don't have time for this crap yeah so whereas for me i just passed episode i think 674 of one piece a few weeks ago so he watches tv like the hit like his dad watches tv his dad watches 11 seasons of the same story done the same way every single episode okay Just different people and then my dad will turn around and watch that same show again he does. For me, once I get once I get through a three hundred plus episode series, I'm like, okay, I had a I had a fun couple months slash years with that. Like I watched all of X Files. I've seen every X Files episode there is, including the movies. And I have no desire to go back and start over at the beginning and watch it again. I did try that and I was like, I already saw this. I know what's gonna happen. So once I know what's going to happen, it just doesn't hold in the same interest for me anymore. For me, um, movies are much more rewatchable than TV. Okay, there are movies I binge watch. Yeah. Uh, like for me, I I absolutely plan to go back and marathon like the Marvel movies someday. Um, yeah. And uh, like I've already seen uh, the most recent Dragon Ball Super movie um like four times mm. since it came out and uh so like this movie in terms of rewatchability though um i mean you can this one okay let me put it this way for me if this was going to be in the regular cycle of my life this would be a background noise only movie where um it's only on because i don't want to be alone in a room <laughs> uh, you know, this is not one of those ones where you're like, you're, you're, you're not getting any content, you know? 
So this is very much supplemental material for Riddick fans. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it really is. This uh, is for people who are already in. Yeah, I I'd mean, say. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's not a bad Riddick story, and I like, I like the Riddick movies. I won't necessarily watch them a lot. Like, if I see a Riddick movie on, I will try to watch it, and it usually gets shut off, just because <laughs> I've seen it, I know what's going to happen, um, but it's a background noise movie for me. Yeah. You know? Honestly, in terms of, um, I expected this to be, like, our first really weird one, which it wasn't that weird. <clears throat> like, even the the background, like, set design of this movie looked like it would be at home in the Alien universe. Okay. Five, so. five seconds between petals or whatever that one was five inches oh, per second. five centimeters per second okay that was weirder than this one yeah but mostly because of the tone and like the emotional storytelling right. behind okay. it okay um, but if we're like if we're comparing weirdness this is far more, more tame. <laughs> well like, and, it's, it's pa and more, palatable yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, ter and in terms of violence, <clears throat> I actually kind of expected this to be a little more along the lines of the Castlevania show on Netflix, which it definitely wasn't. It didn't even reach close to Castlevania levels of gore or violence. Yeah, so. Because like, uh, I, I, expe I expected there to be like more like stabbing and characters dying and mutilation and blood flying, but there wasn't as much of that as I thought there would be. Yeah, there really wasn't. It was because you didn't... Well, there was, like, no blood at all. There was a little bit of blood. Was there? Yeah. Okay. Like, when he cut someone, blood would go flying, but it wouldn't, mm -hmm. like... It wasn't, like, gratuitous. It, it was, like, it a wasn't spray splat. of blood. It wasn't yeah. this... It wasn't gore. Yeah. Whereas, with something like Castlevania, there are extended sequences of monster rampages in that show with, like, just people getting eviscerated. Mm. So. Okay. But, back to Dark Fury, um recommend i would are we are we gonna start giving stars on this stuff oh are we gonna start like, <coughs> yeah we can rate it um on a one to ten ten being best one being worst i would give this a four yeah four four point five is around where i would rate this do we want to retroactively rate the other ones because i'd say iron giant is probably around an eight for me yeah i would say a nine i like that one <clears throat> and for story for um animation hmm. you know the whole thing but um five seconds per inch five centimeters per second yeah five centimeters per second um that one is like a two for me like <laughs> if i'm okay if i never see it again i'd rate i'd rate that one like a yeah two or a three um now, like, animation Animation is a 10. Oh, yeah. Story content Beautiful. is a 2. Um, the My Hero movie, the first one, because the second one came out now. That one like. was a really good movie. I, I mean, you know... That one's a 7 or an 8 for me. Easily. I I mean, on par with seven. both animation and story, I would say it right up there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then what was... El Dorado. <laughs> six. I'd say that one's a 6. It's on, it's on the higher end of the spectrum. But, uh, and it does hold yeah, up very well. It, it, it falls right in the middle. Yeah. yeah. It's five or six. And those are all the ones we've watched so far. Yeah, right I think so. Alrighty. All right. Well, thanks for. So if, if I have led any Riddick fans towards an interesting movie you may not have known about, but let's be honest, if you like Riddick enough to consider yourself a fan, you knew this movie existed. <laughs> and you've probably um, seen it And already. you've probably seen it. It's probably already on your shelf. Um, in fact, I think this movie might be sold in Riddick DVD box sets. So, like, you know this exists. Uh, but anyway, in case you didn't, and you're interested in just 30 minutes of something cool to look at, um, and you think I directed you towards that, then subscribe to the channel. That's an order. Um, and I already know what we're gonna watch next week. We're keeping the, uh, the weird adult animation vibe going for next week so okay. um we will see you then